Hey everyone, this is going to be a summary overview of the Team Builder platform. Um, this overview is uh, specific to trainers, gyms, and private facilities. There's also another video that's specific to team sports and sports organizations. This will be a quick overview, so if you want a more um, comprehensive overview, I would uh, encourage you to schedule a demo. A 30-minute demo will give you a little bit more insight into these features than what's provided in this video. So whenever we do an, an overview of the platform, the first thing we go over is the exercise database under coach tools. So the database is a place where anyone can create any exercise and use their own video. So if I were to create a new exercise variation, I can go ahead and put the name in here. I can add the video link here, and then I could choose the tracking type and even categorize the exercise if I wanted to. Now, in addition to creating your own exercises, we do provide a database of 500 exercises and videos from our partner, Active Life. So talk to one of our salespeople about that database if you are on trial or if you are thinking about purchasing a subscription. The database is also broken up into different kinds of exercises. So for instance, lifts, speed, agility, quickness, and conditioning, circuits, so on and so on. Now, when we move on from the exercise database, we can talk about how we organize our clients or athletes into what we call calendars. So calendars are a way to give workouts to athletes. So we assign athletes or clients to these calendars. So for example, if I have something called hybrid clients, this means I'm putting them on different tracks. I can have a single calendar for that. And then I can also have sub calendars underneath. So for instance, if I create training programs based on elite status, fit status and healthy status, I can put my clients into one of these three calendars. If I build a training program for hybrid, that's going to go to everyone. And if I want to build more specific tracks or programs, I can build it on these sub calendars. Now, what's not seen here is the third tier, and that's the individual tier. So I can actually create training programs that are one on one specific to the athlete or client as well. The last thing we'll cover as far as the starting steps to Team Builder is what we call manage users. So this is where we simply add athletes and clients or we add other trainers and coaches. So adding uh, clients or athletes is easy. I can type in first name, last name, email, and it will send them an invite to join the Team Builder account. I can also send out an easy join code, and this is a code that goes out to, uh, well, I can send the code out to athletes and clients and they can download the Team Builder app on their smartphone and they can input the code and then sign themselves onto my account. So the code is given out by uh, a coach or trainer on the Team Builder account. When it comes to coaches and trainers, we can add as many as we would like. There's no limit to how many coaches and trainers can be added to a Team Builder account. And we can also give coaches and trainers access to specific clients and athletes. So if you have a trainer who trains 10 people, I can give that trainer access to those 10 people and no one else. I can also limit their permissions to view certain features. So if I want someone to be able to program, but I do not want them to, for example, create new exercises or edit the exercise database, I can limit that for them as well. Now, once you do those three things, create exercises, create calendars, and add athletes and clients, then we can go to the calendar and we can begin programming. So programming starts by selecting a calendar to program for. In this case, I'll choose hybrid clients. And I can also click this button called week view, which gives me this more open view of who, who, who to program for and, and when. So let's take uh, February 23rd as an example. If I wanted to create a program for this day, I would just click add exercise. And then for that day, I could add a lift. I could add speed, agility, quickness, and conditioning. I could add a circuit. I can add what we call sports science questionnaires. So these are questionnaires that ask about sleep, nutrition, soreness, overall readiness, and overall wellness. I can also add a note, and I can add a warm-up. So a typical session might look something like this. If I wanted to add a coach note, I can say, today we're going to do a coach note. And I just want to explain that this is a speed strength day. Uh, uh, no crushing loads. Just move the bar fast. Okay, so that's my note. The next thing I'll do is I'll create a dynamic warm up. So I'll say dynamic warm up, and then I'll say this warm up is three by 10, and we're gonna do sit ups, uh, pull ups, and uh, 10 yard sprints. Um, so this is not the best warm up, I'm just giving an example. So let's say that's the warm up for the day. 
And then let's say we're going to get into lifting. Okay, so now I want to add a lift and we want to get into back squat. So I'll choose back squat and we're going to do three sets of five. I could also type in the letter C into the reps box and that gives me custom reps. So I can do six, four, four. And then if I click this percentage icon, I can assign a percentage to each set as well. So if I do that, it's actually going to tell the client or athlete how much weight to lift based on their one rep max. And the one rep max is something that you can put in for the client or athlete or something they can put in for themselves. Uh, we also have a formula that will create a one rep max based on training data. So if you use our formula, every session a client or athlete trains will update the training max uh, to reflect their current strength level if they create a new max for themselves. If they don't, they just stay on the same max that they've been training on. So once I add that to the session, you can see I have a little bit of a session going here. And this is, again is for hybrid clients. Now, if I go to my sub calendars, say for instance, Elite, I can see that they have the same workout because they inherit that from their parent calendar. Now, if my Elite clients need to do a little bit more volume, I can actually bump this up to five and I can say, we're just going to keep going here with sets of four and we're going to get up to 82 and a half. All right. So now I've modified the program and I've added some volume to my elite clients uh, on that track specifically. And in the same vein, if I wanted to go to athlete calendars, this is that third tier. So if I have that uh, athlete who just needs a little bit more one-on-one -on -one programming, or if they're entirely one-on-one, -on -one, then I can just write their program for them as an individual as opposed to putting them under some sort of group calendar. So that is how programming works. Now, when athletes train on Team Builder, they can access the program on their iOS or Android mobile app. So for instance, if they were to look at their app, they would be able to see their training program. They could fill in their numbers. They can view the video for a given exercise and they can view their training history for a given exercise. If they add a note, uh, they can also uh, upload a video of themselves lifting. So if you want them to record the last set or the last couple sets, they can make that on video and they can upload it through Team Builder uh, into the system. And once that takes place, then you can refer to the journal and view videos uh, of any of your athletes. So if I'm looking at videos here, I can see here's someone who's doing some bench press and I want to see their video and I see that Okay, they're moving the bar, you know, pretty quickly. So uh, I'm going to write a note in response and I'll say, hey, great job on that. Uh, I feel like you can add a little bit more to your max, maybe five or 10 pounds, because I, th I thought the bar moved pretty quickly. So this is one on one dialogue that you have with all your clients or athletes using video in Team Builder. Uh, another way that we use team builders through the team feed. So you can group your clients into groups and then they'll share their own team feed. And if that's the case, you can post pictures and videos in there. They can post pictures and videos in there. And then anytime they set a new max or a new PR, it's going to post into the team feed. So it kind of creates like a, a social media kind of Facebook feed environment within your program, uh, within your practice. The next thing we'll talk about is the maxes and PRs page. Um, this is where we can view any given athlete and we can view their maxes. So if I want to look at someone's back squat over time, these data points again are generated either by our one rep max formula or they're generated by the athlete or the coach uh, typing in a one rep max for that exercise. And this is a way for you and the client or athlete to kind of visualize their strength progression over time. The next thing we'll look at is the leaderboard. Uh, leaderboards can be generated, again, based on groups, and you can group people however you want. So if you're the kind of uh, facility that trains teams, uh, teams can be put into to groups, and you can have leaderboards for them. And then, of course, if you have one-on-one -on -one clients, you don't necessarily have to include them into the leaderboards at all. Uh, next is evaluations. Evaluations is a way to test athletes or clients. Uh, so for instance, if you do something like a combine, or a movement screen or something else, you can create that in Team Builder Custom, and then you can select the athletes to test, and we'll give you this big input table. The benefit here is that we store their test data in chronological order. So for instance, if you uh, test an athlete on a combine for three years, twice a year, and you run a report for that athlete, you can get six results in chronological order for their combine test results over time. Coming back to coach tools, we'll cover a few more things. Goal setting is the ability to set a goal for someone's body weight, a one rep max, or a specific time on an exercise like a one mile run. 
and then they'll get feedback as to how they're progressing against that goal. You can also set what we call dynamic goals, which is based on body weight. So if you want a certain group of clients or athletes to be able to back squat twice their body weight, you can put that multiple in. We'll take their body weight and calculate what their back squat should be. And then that will be their goal for that exercise. Documents and links is a way to share documents and links. It's kind of like Dropbox built into Team Builder. So if you have nutrition documents or other kinds of resources that you want to share specifically with athletes or clients, you can do that there. If you're interested in printing out workouts, we do create workout cards automatically based on the workouts that you build in Team Builder. Attendance taking is the ability to take attendance and report on it. And then finally, we get the reporting section. And we offer quite a few reports, so we'll cover just a few. For instance, if we take the um, all athletes and run a progress report, we can run it for this year and we can say, show me how everyone's barbell back squat has improved over the course of the year. And then we can submit and then we get a chart for everyone mapping out their barbell back squat over time. And we can do this with any exercise in our database as well. Another report we can run is the questionnaire report. So if we have a questionnaire that we run and we wanted to take a look at how people answer answer that questionnaire if they fill in data we can kind of get an idea of how they're sleeping how sore they are what the energy level is and it's color coded and it's color coded based on how you want the answers to result so for instance if you measure soreness on a scale from one to five and one to two is green and four to five is red then you can tell us that and then we'll show the colors in accordance with what you consider good or bad when it comes to questionnaires. We do have internal messaging as well. So if you wanna send messages out, you can send a message to an individual, to a group of athletes or clients or to everyone. And Team Builder messages show up as push notifications on the mobile app. So it shows up a little bit more prominently than a text or an email. And then since it's a push notification, you actually have the ability to schedule push notifications. So you can schedule them out ahead of time and you can even set up recurring push notifications. So if you want a push notification with a message to show up every day at 6 a.m. Monday through Friday, you can set that up on a recurring basis and we'll do that for you. Now, the last thing we'll cover is what we call the online payments portal. So as you take the time to write training programs within Team Builder, you can then take those training programs and give it a price and put it up for sale. And once you do that, we will give you a landing page that you can market. So if you uh, take a program, put it for sale, give it a price on a monthly basis, then what we'll do is we will create a landing page that you can share and the landing page will have a button that says buy now and anyone can buy into your program online and these folks um, don't count against your athlete count because they're actually paid for via commission so team builder takes a 10 percent commission on, on any sale that you make and that is how those folks are being paid for as opposed to counting against your athlete count that you purchase with a team builder subscription